Kusem entered the room, where her son covered in fear. Come out with me, my lion. You are the Sultan now. Master of Shahs, cried she. No, 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 tell my brother that I am loyal to him. Your brother is dead, Ibrahim, said Kusem. No, no, I am loyal to him. Brother, the new Sultan shouted. I am loyal to you. I will always be loyal. Don't kill me. He thinks it's a loyalty test, Kusem thought. Then she ordered, Come out now, Sultan Ibrahim, master of kings, the ruler of three continents. Our reign begins today. Before we get to the video, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like. May you live a long life without the fear of getting strangled to death by your brother at any moment. When Sultan Murad IV died, he did not leave any sons to take his place, and he had killed all his brothers in fear of losing the throne to them. All his brothers, but Ibrahim, who was protected by Kusam at the time, as she had foreseen this crisis. Prince Ibrahim, however, was a mental train wreck. He had spent all his life in a golden cage, under constant threats of death by the hands of his brother. After all these years, Ibrahim was filled with crippling paranoia. Thus, when he was informed that his brother Sultan Murad had died, he did not believe them. Ibrahim thought that Murad was testing his loyalty, and he would be killed if he believed them. Finally, Ibrahim was persuaded and agreed to ascend to the throne at the age of 25. But he was in no shape to rule the empire. Thus, the state affairs were left to Kusem and the imperial ministers. There was another important problem, however. Ibrahim had grown estranged to women. Normally, Ottoman princes would be granted their own harems when they reached 15. However, Ibrahim hadn't touched a single woman at the age of 25. This was a job for Kusem as the mother sultan since it was extremely crucial for the dynasty to continue. Here, another woman becomes relevant to our story. Hatice Turhan was a Ukrainian girl, bought by Kusem at a very young age. She was smart and Kusem loved her and adopted her. At the time our story is set, Turhan is 15, and Kusem couldn't have found a better candidate than a girl who she was grooming for many years, whom she trusted and would listen to her. Kusam somewhat forced Ibrahim to sleep with Turan, which apparently gained Ibrahim a newfound appetite for a woman, and he took many other lovers after Turan. It appears that Ibrahim never felt much affection towards Turan and stopped seeing her after fathering his first son, Mehmet. Instead, he started spending his time with a Georgian girl, Zafire. Turhan was not a pushover, and this situation quickly escalated into a rivalry between Turhan and Zafire. And Kösem, of course, supported her dear Turhan, the mother of her grandson. In one of the days, Turhan sees Ibrahim talking with Zafire and confronts her husband. She says, if you should spend time with a woman, it shall be me, and if you are going to spend time with anyone, it shall be your son. Ibrahim got mad at her and threw his four-year-old son to the pool. Young prince was barely saved by one of the servants there, but he hit his head to the fountain and remained scarred for the rest of his life. Ibrahim, after doing it, saw Kusam looking at him and is filled with fear of his mother. He ran away frantically. Later that day, Kusam called Zafir to her chambers, pulled her by the hair, insulted her. The next day, Zafire was exiled to Egypt. On the way, her ship got attacked by the Knights of Malta and she was either captured by them or killed in the incident. At the end, in the Ottoman palace, the mother reigned supreme and no one else, not the Sultan, not his queen, only Kösem. The ship incident was the conclusion of a domestic crisis in the palace and the start of a national one. Ottoman-Venetian relations had been peaceful for a long time by 1745. Venetians had agreed to pay tribute to the Ottomans during Murad's reign as the sublime Porte long desired to control Crete. 
So Venice, to prevent war, pursued policies of appeasement. This changed when an imperial ship carrying some palace officials and Lady Zafire was attacked by Maltese pirates near Kirit. These pirates killed all the men aboard and took shelter in Kirit. This was a major insult to the Ottoman Empire and a war was declared. Thus started the longest siege in history. Ottoman armies landed on the island and besieged the fortress of Kandia. The siege would last for 25 years and the war would continue with its ups and downs for the Ottomans. Shortly after the siege, Venetian navy started the blockade of Gallipoli, preventing Constantinople from getting food, as the Ottoman navy was tied up in Kirit. This over time caused mass unrest in the capital, as food prices kept rising. This was the last straw. For years, the palace ministers put up with Ibrahim's erratic behavior, as he was the only member of the dynasty. But the food prices and the unrest were too much. Kesem decided it was the time, and she gave the green light to the Janissaries. It was time for another coup. It was time for another sultan. Janissaries gathered in their barrack mosque. The troops were rallied against the cabinet ministers. But as with all the Janissary revolts, the main target was the sultan. On the paper, the target of the coup was the Grand Vizier. The Grand Vizier at the time was Ahmed Pasha and was the main enemy of the Janissaries due to his corruption. Janissaries and Kösem instead supported Ahmed's rival, Mehmet Pasha. In the Barak Mosque, Janissaries and religious clerics demanded the Sultan to execute Ahmed Pasha and make Mehmet Pasha the Prime Minister. However, the real perpetrators, including Kösem and Janissary commanders, knew that Ibrahim would never give Ahmed Pasha. Ibrahim not only refused Janissary's demands, but also summoned their candidate and beat him to a pulp. When Janissary saw Mehmet Pasha covered in blood and all bruised and got outraged, they quickly besieged the palace, this time demanding Sultan Ibrahim to step down. Meanwhile, Ahmed Pasha had panicked and fled the palace in disguise. He was quickly caught by the Janissaries, however. They cut him to small pieces, thus giving him the nickname A Thousand Pieces Ahmed Pasha. The palace was besieged, however Janissaries did not dare to assault it, nor did they need to. Kösem Sultan controlled all the guards, and Janissaries were kindly let in. Kösem throned Ibrahim and Turan's son, Mehmet later that day, and Ibrahim was imprisoned. Everything seemed to be settled now. Ibrahim was dethroned, common folk and the Janissaries were placated, and Ibrahim's seven-year-old son, Mehmet, was to be throned. However, fire once started was not as easy to extinguish. Cavalry regiments in the capital declared support for Sultan Ibrahim, as a seven-year-old Sultan was not very appealing to them. This complicated the things. With the support of the cavalry, there might be a counter coup, or worse, a fight between the Janissaries and the cavalry. Ibrahim must die, decided the Janissaries. The old Sultan's cell was stormed and he was executed. Whether Kösem begrudgingly agreed or things got out of her control, we do not know. As Ibrahim's coffin got carried away, Kösem calmed her crying daughter in law. Cry no more, dear Turhan. Men, come and go. It is the woman who shall reign, said Kösem, as she wiped her tears. If you would like to learn about how the wonderful and close relationship between Kösem and Turhan lasts for a lifetime, please subscribe so you won't miss the next episode.